Ever wondered how you can use time in your trading? I've tried trading many different time zones, like ICT kill zones and macros to find the best ones. Today, I'm going to reveal a simple guide that will help you trade more profitably using time. But first, I want to show you four steps before revealing the simple guide. And the longer we get into the video, the more important the steps become. When I first started trading, I used to trade in the morning, at lunch, and in the afternoon. Then I watched an ICT video that changed how I traded. In this video, ICT explains that there are certain times when the volatility is higher, and that means it is easier for us catching large trade entries. These times are called ICT kill zones. The kill zones vary from market to market, and I'll show you when they occur. But before we get into that, there's something important to know. There are times when the market is at its best, even better than the kill zones I just mentioned. During these times, there's a higher chance for the market to reach a draw on liquidity. And this is where our trade setup works best. These times are called macros. Some of these macro times happen within kill zones, which increase our chances of success. It is a bit difficult to find these kill zones, but luckily there are some very helpful people which have created some indicators which can help us find the kill zones. And if you type in ICT kill zones plus pivot TFO, then if you press on that, it will then show you the ICT kill zones. The problem with this indicator is that it doesn't really show the Forex kill zones. So to fix that, you can go up here in the corner where it says settings, go down here where it says New York AM, and then set it to 7 AM to 10 AM, and the New York PM to 10 AM to 12 PM. If you are trading indices, you just have to change the New York AM to 8.30 till 11, and then the New York PM to 13.30 till 16. On the right, you can see that we have these ICT macro zones, which are placed within the London AM and lunch plus PM sessions. And these sessions are actually the ones which we ideally want to be trading within. So when we have these macros, which I told you guys before, that's where price is going to reach for a draw on liquidity that is combined with the ICT kill zones where we're going to be offered large trade entries that is going to make it way higher probability. And to see these ICT macro zones, you want to go down here in the corner where it says time zones and press on that. And then go up to UTC minus four New York and press on that. Then you're going to be able to see these ICT macro zones at the right time. Now, how do we know when not to trade? There are certain times when trading conditions are less favorable. I'll cover these in a bit. If you don't know these times, I'm 80% sure you have traded during them. Now I'll show you two different charts one on the left and one on the right. And I would like for you to point out which one shows the lowest probability trading conditions. It's the left one because it falls within the Asian session. And during the Asian session, there's less volatility released into the market compared to the New York session, meaning the conditions aren't favorable. And there are other periods like the Asian session that also have low probability trading conditions, which I will talk about in just a minute. You might not know this, but there are time zones that last only 5 minutes, and that's actually where there's most volatility released into the market. You can see here that there's one large 5 minute candle between 8.30 and 8.35. The reason price expanded so much was because news was released. There are actually two other 5 minute time zones like this one. Now you might wonder if you can trade during this big 5 minute expansion. However, it's tough to place trade entries when news is released because price often moves in both directions, seeking liquidity or stop losses on both sides. Sometimes price sweeps liquidity on one side and then target a specific point. So in simple terms, there are many different possible scenarios. I personally avoid trading during nose because it's hard to predict the price movement, meaning this is not included for the simple guide later in the video. The other two time zones are easier to predict for trade entries because price is seeking liquidity but will also manipulate a lot. The first time zone is doing the Judas swing, which happens around 9.30. The Judas swing is when price manipulates into a specific point where it will likely reverse, targeting liquidity in the opposing direction. For example, we can see right here during 9.30, price reached up and swept the equal highs, and now we would anticipate price to reach for drawn liquidity in the opposing direction of where price manipulated. And we can see price is just moving lower, reaching the Asian lows, which is a great draw on liquidity. 
and will mainly catch a trade entry up in the manipulation leg where price sweeps the equal highs. The last 5 minute time zone is where we often see reversals, and that's around 10 am. This is part of the simple guide I'll reveal soon. But as I mentioned before, reversals usually occur around 10 am because price is likely to reach a point of interest. I personally find most trade entries around 10 am, as it is within what I consider the highest probability macro. Now an example of this could be right here. So going up into 10 am, we can see we are pretty bearish, then right before 10 am, price swept the sell side liquidity, and then at 10 am, we can see price is slowly starting to reverse from there, making this a large bullish candle. And after that, we can see price reverses the bias from bearish to now bullish, moving a lot higher. Earlier, I mentioned that I would reveal my simple guide on time that will help you trade more profitably, and here it is. But first, let me show you one last area where you should avoid trading. Personally, I have traded during this time so many times, and it hasn't worked out for me, so I avoid it. And it's mainly outside the kill zones where conditions are less favorable. This doesn't mean you can't trade outside the kill zones at all, but staying within them is usually better. For example, you can see here that when price is trading outside the kill zones, it's just consolidating, and we don't want to trade within consolidations. But once we enter the New York kill zone, the conditions suddenly improve and become higher probability. And we can see that the conditions is higher probability because price is respecting PDA rates and is targeting draw on liquidities such as session highs and lows like these London lows down here. Now what you all have been waiting for, here is the symbol guide. And I know this looks very confusing, but let me just explain this in an easy way. The first criteria is that we want to be trading within the kill zones such as the New York, PM, and London session. And we want to do that because that's where we can catch the large trade entries, meaning the conditions are more favorable, and we can find the highest probability macros, which leads us to the next step, which is trading macros. And the reason behind this is that it increases our chances of success as the algorithm is specifically seeking liquidity at these current macro zones, which is good for our trade setup as they become more accurate. And I prefer the 950 to 1010 macro, and I will talk about that in just a minute. The third criteria is avoiding low probability conditions. And of course we want to do that, because if we're trading low probability conditions, it decreases our chance of success. Now the last step is looking for the 10 a.m. reversal, as it can give us a lot of confirmation, such as giving us a clear understanding of what the bias is for the rest of the 950 to 1010 macro, or the 1050 to 11, 10 macro. If we want to implement these things to the chart, this is a pretty good example showing you this. So the first criteria is that we want to look within the New York kill zone. And as we can see right here, price is currently trading within the New York kill zone. And this also counts if you want to trade the PM and London session. Then the second criteria is that we want to look for a macro that is specifically placed within the kill zones. And right here, I'm going to focus on the 950 to 1010 macro, as that's the one which I think is the highest probability one. Then the third criteria is avoid low probability conditions. And these conditions are some of the highest probability ones, so that we are indeed doing. Then the last criteria is that we want to focus on the 10 a.m. reversal. And this is a perfect example for that. So we can see right at 10 a.m., price start to move lower, and then at 10.2, we created a SMT at this low, and price also swept this short-term low. So that is pretty bullish, right? And we can see within that 10 a.m. 5-minute time zone, price managed to move all the way up here. And that signals to us price is currently starting to reverse. You may or may not have noticed this, but there's something within this example that makes it way higher probability than it already is. So when price created this SMT and swept the sell side liquidity and then started to move higher, we also created a bunch of PDA rates in the meantime. And more specifically, we created a fair value gap, which was within the 950 to 1010 macro, but even more specifically, it was within the 10 to 11 a.m. window where we're looking for the ICT civil bullet. We know that price should move higher from this fair value gap, but where should price reach for? Well, if we look more over to the left, we can see that we have this high up here, which is considered as low resistance liquidity because price have already created the 10 a.m. reversal. 
So this setup should work out perfectly. And we can see within the 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. window, price already reached for this high after moving down several times into this fair value gap.